Welcome back to SCP Files Unzipped. Uh, so yeah. You're calling it now. <laughs> That's what I've been calling it. Really? Yeah. I, didn't, I never noticed that. You didn't notice that that was the intro of the entire time, and all the videos said Files Unzipped, and all the no. thumbnails had Files Unzipped. <laughs> no. That's hilarious. Anywho, <laughs> today we have someone new. Welcome, Turn Up. Do you want to be hey. called Turn Up or Justin? Uh, Turnip's fine. Turnip's fine, okay. Magnabbit Andrew, you just doxed the guy. And his yeah, last name and his address are... <laughs> you know what? I'll flash a picture of him on the... No, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, Jesus. Anywho. My, name's... My first name's so simplistic, it's gonna take ages for you to find me. But, yeah, no. <laughs> you acted like your first name is, like, Bob. I mean, I mean, it pretty much is. Justin is like a very yeah. like common name. It's, yeah, no, I'm not gonna lie. It's super common. Anywho, today we're gonna be talking about a few SCPs. We're gonna be having a good time, having a few laughs, saying "what the fuck" a few times, probably. Um, we're past the first thirty seconds of the video, right? Yeah, we're a minute in, so I think we're allowed to swear now. <laughs> I think that's, that's probably how the algorithm works. I don't know. I don't know what the hell's happening. <laughs> so, the first SCP we're going to be talking about today, if I can have my folders right, is we're going to be talking about SCP-049, which is the Plague Doctor. Now, I could send you images, but I'm pretty sure you guys have Google. And you probably know this one. Um, yep. What, like, what do you guys know about him? Because I know you have, like, a vague understanding of, like, what he does and what he's about. People meme him so hard. <laughs> like, Doesn't he, like, hunt down, impu like, impure people or something? Yeah, that's, that's pretty like much it. Freaking, freaking, there's dissect, a gif on, he like, dissect there's a, people? There's a gif on Discord, and apparently it's just a part of a regular, you know, whatever, uh, video, and it's just a play doctor just walking around, there's someone getting married in the background, and it's <laughs> funny. Yeah, playing a gangster's paradise behind it. It's a great <laughs> yeah. video. Um, yeah, so today we're going to be talking about, uh, our first SCP is the Plague Doctor. Uh, one of the oldest SCPs, uh, ever made is in scp containment breach uh well known but often not understood completely so we're going to take some time talk about him see what he's about uh and uh maybe uh we'll talk about i don't fucking know um so <laughs> hey you're the expert here yeah but plague doctor was first found in a, a small town in southern france basically a bunch of police were shooting up a bunch of his uh, zombies, a.k.a. instances of SCP-049-2, and he was spotted uh, in, like, a window taking notes on, like, the encounter as the, like, the law enforcement was taking him out. Then he was taken in, into Foundation custody, and, yeah, he basically wanted to go and seek uh like-minded individuals in the scp organization it's unknown if he knew the scp organization was a thing or if it was just a coincidence that he was taking in uh it's assumed that he is very 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 old um his cloak and mask aren't clothing they're simply a part of his body at this point which is That's disgusting disturbing. but like that's this is what he does uh, I believe, like, the exact thing was they said was um, his cloak is indistinguishable from where the cloak starts and where his body begins. Ah, so it's like Jotaro's hair. God damn it, I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I wasn't thinking about it, but it is a lot like Jotaro's hair. God, God damn it, at least we're on the same way. Ugh. So we're gonna watch uh, a little video on, uh, on him now. Um, he's uh. So do you guys have the stream up? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Of a link. If you guys want to watch this video later, the link is in the description. 
And here we go. Alors, comment nous devrions donc commencer une introduction? Is that is that French? Can we get a translator? The King's English. No need for translation, sir. I can speak it well enough. Good. My name is Dr. Raymond Ham, and I ha ah, a doctor, a like-minded individual, no doubt. Wherein is your speciality, sir? Cryptobiology. Why? <laughs> a medical man such as myself wanders abound, and here I worried I had been abducted by common street thugs. This place, then, this is your laboratory. I had wondered, as clean as it is, and with such little trace of the pestilence here. The pestilence? What do you mean? The scourge. The great dying. Come now. You know, the... Mm, what is it they call it? The... The... Uh, ah, no matter. The pestilence, yes. It abounds outside these walls, you know. So many have succumbed. And many more will continue to, until such time as a perfect cure can be developed. Fortunately, I am very close. It is my duty in life to rid the world of it, you see. The cure to end all cures. When you say the great dying, are you talking about the bubonic plague? I don't know what that is. Oh, I see. Right, well... The entities our agents encountered at the house, uh, they were dead when you encountered them. Yes, you reanimated them. Mm. In a manner of speaking, you see things too simply, Doctor. Expand your horizons. Life and death. Sickness and health. These are amateur terms for amateur physicians. There is only one ailment that exists in the world of men, and that is the pestilence, and nothing else. Make no mistake, they were very ill. All of them. You think you cured those people? Indeed. My cure is most effective. But the things we recovered were not human. Yes, well, it is not a perfect cure, but that will come with time, and further experimentation. I have spent a lifetime Developing my methods, Dr. Ham, and will spend a lifetime more, if necessary. Now, we have wasted too much time. There is work to do. I will require a laboratory of my own, one where I can continue my research unimpeded. And assistance, of course, though I can provide those on my own. In time. <laughs> oh. I don't think our organization would be willing to... Nonsense. We are all men of science. Fetch your coat and show me to my quarters, Doctor. Our work begins now. Yep, and that's the whole video. Oh. So, basically, he thinks that everyone, like, is affected... Well, I mean, everyone is affected by, like, the pestilence... And yes. like so, so he, he he basically cures death by bringing back people. So it's not death, as he said. Uh, life and death, sickness and health. These are uh, what, what was it? Uh, simple terms for amateur physicians. I'm sorry about the subtitles. Those auto-generated subtitles were actually awful. <laughs> like they were. Yeah, they were. <laughs> but like, but when he says he cured them, does that mean he kills them first and then brings them back? Um, kind of. Sometimes, uh, he, he like, so, mm, if I were to explain it, so the pestilence is like, uh, the SCP organization has tested people he said had the pestilence, and they literally found nothing wrong with them. It is indetectable to modern medicine. You could say, like, he's just out of his mind, he's bad shit crazy. He is an SCP, like, after all. But his abilities are, like, real enough. Uh, he is a doctor's bag, which he uses, which he gets tools from, which he reanimates corpses. Sometimes it's, like, real quick, like, 30 seconds up. Sometimes he's experimenting for weeks and weeks. He'll reanimate someone. 
kill them again, reanimate them, and just until he finds something that's success. Sometimes he'll work for weeks and just deem something a failure and throw it away. His idea of the pestilence is... It, it's honestly unknown at this point in time. Hmm. Okay. But he is, like, an intelligent SCP. He's not a monster that goes around killing people. He is intelligent, and he knows how to work with the system. Uh, currently, he is... I'm not employed. He's like being contained by the SCP organization, but he has access to a lab and they supply him with uh, uh, corpses uh, two times, uh, once every two weeks. Uh, typically it's bovine, so cow or pig. Uh, he is no longer allowed to have human uh, tests. Uh, well, um, what's it called? Cadavers. Uh, because, you know, sometimes bad things happen with them. Jesus, why yeah. they will allow that to happen in the first place, I'll never know. Well, they I believe mean, something that can be found from him. Like, like in the little case that there is something, like, the pestilence is real, and it is, like, infecting people. Like, weirder shit happens in the SCP universe. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, that's true. And their job is to contain and, like, if they can study what he's doing, how it works. And he said, like, oh, it's not a perfect cure. Like, it's not, like, this is not what I want to happen. I don't want to bring back people with zombies. I want to bring people back cured of the pestilence. And it's not something that everyone has. It's actually, like, a small population. So I he, he eventually just, like, if he can just bring people back from the dead, like, you could see why the SCP organization would be very interested in this ability. Right. Oh, he also has the anomalous property where uh, if he touches you, you just die. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean. Didn't know that he could just hug high people out of existence, but okay, whatever. Yeah, you don't, you don't want hugs from this man's. Apparently not. No, that doesn't doesn't end very well. Um, he is uh he's mostly calm and he's very cordial with the SCP staff, but if he detects that he's in the presence of the pestilence, he is prone to outbursts of rage and violence. So there's that, and unfortunately, like. It's not something you can test your people for. Like, if you're escorting him from one facility to the other, you're like, oh, God, I hope he doesn't think I have the pestilence. Like, it's not something you can test for. And, like, one day he might be like, oh, you're good. And then he's like, I don't know what happened to you, but you're infected with it. And then he just lunges at you. Well. <laughs> Glad to know that that's random. But he writes down all his findings well, in a notebook, and he shares it with the other doctors in the facility. Most of the doctors think, like, they can't understand what he's trying to do or what he's trying to accomplish. But he's still allowed to do what he's doing, because clearly, he is getting some kind of results. Yeah. But you could Thanks also say this. most yeah, of his he... methods are, you know, outdated. <laughs> That's the... That's an uh, understatement. Mm. He knows uh, English and Old French. Those are his preferred language uh, languages, but he knows several others, uh, mainly European languages. Uh, he is very, very old. The age, uh, SCP organization does not know how old he is, but he, he, he has a, a quote where he's like, uh, I spent a lifetime researching this, and I will spend a lifetime more. Like, it's not even a challenge for him. You know, sometimes you just wonder to yourself, all these SCPs, they they have to go crazy at some point, just living forever. Well, and I think, and I think the uh, the plague doctor is like the exception to that. I don't Simply think because so. Because he has something. I think so because he has something to do. Mm, like that's fair. Like it's like, uh, like it's like when people uh, the studies of go uh, being in um, in isolation in prison, you know, like the padded cell. It's like people who have uh, people who go into like you know that isolation, that kind of uh, lockdown. They always say you gotta figure out something to do. 
whether or not it's just like counting numbers all the time or counting like the dots just to keep your mind active because if not you're gonna go insane yeah like i uh, yeah so i feel it's like that the the guy is clearly off his rocker well, but in, in the clip I showed not... you, he was saying, like, uh, he, he said the pestilence, and then uh, he referred, like, the doctor brought up the bubonic plague. And that's clearly something, like, he's lived through, because his outfit originated, like, in the bubonic plague. But he has yeah, no he recollection of the bubonic plague. Uh, he tries to refer to the pestilence as something else, and he basically just gives up and calls it the pestilence again. So his memory is already starting to go. Like, we know that he came from the time of the bubonic plague? Uh, well, yeah, it's kind of inferred. Well, yeah. Like, they don't know for sure, but all of his tools, like, in his bag that he carries around and what he uses, it's all dated to that time period. Okay, I see. Yeah, it's kind of... It's like someone coming in dressed as a ronin having a sword that's, like, from the freaking Edo era. And it's like, you know Musashi Miyamoto? It's like, who? Oh! <laughs> that's this kind of that's that's as weird as that. Yeah. Even though okay. I, uh, in comments, don't quote me on that. I know I got that wrong. Musashi didn't live during the Edo era. Yada yada yada. <laughs> you take things too seriously, bro. <laughs> Bless you. So anyway, I, I think he's pretty interesting. Like, uh, uh, I I included him in the SCP D and D one shot that I did with you guys. Yeah, yeah, which was an interesting little add-on. I, I, didn't, I actually never really knew before that point the plague doctor. I, I kind of knew of him. Yeah, but I didn't really know him. He brought back Carl. You guys love <laughs> yeah. Carl, right? Uh, oh, poor, poor Carl. Carl. <laughs> he got so wrecked in that campaign. Uh, but I that's really also Carl on was... my channel if you guys want to check that out. Yeah, uh, I guess I'll put the link in the description. Honestly, Carl is just, the, the Carl's just sad. Yeah, he I made him really fucking man. sad. Like he was just a dude. Like his anomalous property was like so lackluster, and then all the other SCPs, like he just kept on failing his roles. Like I felt real bad for that man. Well, I mean, I'm... bro, I think he got fucked up by like four individual SCPs. Yeah, I mean... he did. To be fair, what do you expect from an ordinary man and his only other anomalous property is having steals insult him? Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of sad. Dude, yeah, he's a I'd pretty rather, sad boy. I'd rather get messed up by the immortal lizard than come back as the play doctor's puppet. Like, no. <laughs> you, you wouldn't have consciousness. I don't care. <laughs> Yeah, you, you wouldn't realize you've been brought back. I but bro, you, you'd be care. cured it's, of the pestilence. Isn't that what you want? It's, it's like when people come back as a zombie. It's like, well, they don't have consciousness. Yeah, I still don't want to be turned into a freaking zombie, No, though. it's exactly like being turned back into a zombie. It's all right. He got rid of the heart disease. It's, it's okay. <laughs> he got rid of the pestilence, bro. You good. You good. It's like, it just doesn't make any sense. It's just like, I don't know. Life and be death are just terms that amateur physicians use, bro. Like, simple shit. <laughs> the day that I destroyed your village was the worst day of your life. But to me, it was a Monday. <laughs> Pretty sure he says Tuesday, but either way. Life, death, dictionary terms. <laughs> Life and death, sickness and health, these are amateur terms for amateur physicians. He's like, nah, bro, I'm on that pro-physician shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Domestic doctor, Hello. we going international. <laughs> I mean, I I'd assume every physician is an amateur. I mean, can they bring back the dead? I don't think so. That is true. Global they can't even Global cure pandemic. the pestilence, bro. universal. Normal doctors don't even know what the pestilence is. Are they even real doctors? I only want this man to treat me. Global pandemic. We're going universal. Oh, no. I mean, if, if no one can diagnose the pestilence, I don't want them as a doctor. It's just not... Yeah. Are you Just ask the doctor with... about the pestilence. If they don't know what you're talking about, just walk out the door. At least Are he you knows. Are diagnosed with the pestilence? Why not try Zirac? The only medicine for you. 
needs a wreck, call 1-800-GO-SCREW-YOURSELF.COM. Sounds about right. <laughs> slash, use code slash you're welcome. For 1% off. For All right. 1% off of you... your 99 installments. All right, what's... Do you guys want to say anything else about SCP-049 before we move on to the next one? Buy Zurek. <laughs> nah, not 99 really. Is, 99 installments of $99. All right. So we are going to move on to our next SCP. Uh, do you guys want to take a guess which one we're doing? Uh, uh, we've already done the Immortal Lizard. If we're doing the Plague Doctor, then I guess we're doing something that is somewhat recognizable. How Maybe about Shy the Guy? Mm. How about. How about like if we're following what the SCPs in the campaign, maybe it's like that killer drama mask. Do you guys want to see a oh, picture? <laughs> sure. Yeah, sure. Big. Is oh my big god! Is that... <laughs> oh my god! We're doing SCP One Thousand, Keter Class, oh, Bigfoot. Oh yeah. Why did it? Wait, hold up. SCP-1000, why did it take 10 years in order for them to get to this one? What? Because remember, you were like, all the SCPs are labeled by the year that they You're thinking uh, that 10... Came out. Oh, did I say 10,000? Uh, it was 1,000. No, I'm still right. I'm, I'm still right. It's, it's like, only SCP the first number. So, like, the first generation is uh, uh, 1 through 999. Second generation is um, 1,000 through uh, 1,999. Next generation oh. is... Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. No, you, I, you just I have it mixed it up. All right, cool. Now, nah, easy to get confused. It's cool, cool, cool. Wow, I was about to say, it's like, why it take them 10 years to get through this point? Here's a funny picture. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Anywho, we're talking about SCP-1000 Keter Class of Bigfoot. So, what do you guys think, like, like, what lore do you think the SCP organization would have for Bigfoot? What do you think how they would explain his, uh, his presence with? Bro, why did you put a picture of the monkey titan from Attack on Titan on this book? <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, let's see. There's a Bigfoot movie on Netflix. So maybe, just maybe, it follows that. Uh, regeneration. Uh, super speed. When barefoot. Talking to animals. <laughs> can heal oneself. <laughs> aye, aye. All fantastic guesses, but all completely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> What about you, Turn Up? You have an idea on what Bigfoot does? Yeah. Why? Wh uh, what's his anomalous property? I mean, also, maybe to be un <laughs> maybe he just uh, disappears like after a certain um, I don't know, amount of time. Hmm. Or, All photos taken of him will be yeah, blurry we'll just for no disintegrate. <laughs> so there used to be a lot more big feet running around. I think that's the plural, right? Bigfoots or big feet? Oh God, big feet, Let's big feet. <laughs> All right. So there's there's a plural there's a plethora of big feet running around years and years and years and years ago, like thousands of years ago, and they got an anomalous disease. That basically, uh, if a Homo sapien looks at them for a second, they have a two percent chance of dying. And the longer they're observed, the higher the likelihood gets. And two percent is the lowest number. So for some members of the species, it's even higher. Wow, that's depressing. <laughs> Which is why they like to well, stay then. hidden all the time. What kind of messed that's up depressing. crap is this? <laughs> I, I'll be if I got that anomalous pop property, I'd be looking at God like, what the heck? I got well, screwed. I, well, I mean, so there are nocturnal omnivorous apes. 
and they're cla uh, cl in the class of, oh god, I can't read this, Hominini, which is the same one as uh, Pan and Homo, which is, uh, that's us. Um, they can be anywhere from uh, 200 pounds to 600 pounds. They're, they come in gray, brown, black, red, and occasionally white uh, fur. They possess large eyes and good vision. They have a pronounced brow ridge in both males and females. And they have about the average intelligence as a chimpanzee. Yep. Not going to lie, they drew the short end of the stick. Yeah. I, do they have, like, any, like, <laughs> is there anything good about these guys? I mean, they just die. They have a 2% chance of dying every time they look no, at it. No, 2% and okay. higher. I found oh. the exact paragraph that talks about the disease's effect. So the disease that affects them is called SCP-1000-F1. Uh, the effect of it is as follows. Any hominid, including humans, chimpanzees, bonobos, and non-immune instances of SCP-1000 that directly or indirectly observes any instances of SCP-1000 has the minimum 2% chance of being instantly killed through anomalous means via permanent uh, uh, secretion of... Uh, sorry. Suscitation of brain function. This percentage is cumulative, and the uh, blah, blah, and the longer a human views SCP-1000, the higher the chances of instantaneous death increases, uh, at a rate of one percent uh, chance per twenty minutes of viewing. So I was wrong, it, it, but it does go up. This effect varies between individual members of SCP-1000 species, with some individuals carrying a death uh, percent chance of 90%. This effect is also produced by dead individuals, though f small fur samples uh, do not exhibit the effect. Uh, basically, they are mostly hunted by the SCP organization because they are worried that this anomalous disease might transfer to people. But luckily, all instances of SCP-1000 uh, have the natural um, instinct to stay as far away from people as possible. Uh, most of the SCP organization, uh, pretty much all the big feet around human uh, populations have been completely hunted to extinction. <sighs> Uh, now all that's left is a small population in uh, the, I think, northern woods of the United States and Canada and the Himalayas. Man. So that's where the Yeti comes from. <clears throat> yes. Well, that's depressing. <laughs> okay, are you ready for the plot twist? <laughs> oh, God. Uh, they sure. eat humans, huh? No. Everything I well, kind of. Everything I just told you was a lie. Of course. Oh. That's just what they okay. want you to know. Oh no. I was gonna say, man, they live their life in a gotcha. <laughs> it's like as soon as they see a person, they just get vaporized. The reality is probably a lot worse. Uh oh. So I'm about to read a document that needs level 3 clearance required. And luckily, since I am a professional browser of the internet, I have the access to this document. Damn. <laughs> Although, don't show this to the FBI. <laughs> just, just <saying. laughs> what do you mean? These are just stories, right? Yeah. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Stories. Yeah. yeah. Stories. stories. Just it's like Resident stories. Evil. Totally a story. Raccoon City never existed in between the years of 2001 and 2003. Anywho, document alpha 1596-1000, uh, missive from Directive Jones. <clears throat> this is going to be a long read. <laughs> You've probably heard the rumors before now. Everyone without the clearance level to know better just wants to get their dig in. Did you hear Sasquatch is an SCP? <laughs> Are we going to catch Batboy next? Yeah, SCP-1000 is Bigfoot. 
I'm sure you've snickered. Don't worry. Contrary to rumors, we don't actually assign you to Ketter duty. Oh yeah, Bigfoot's Ketter. Uh, Ketter duty for finding something humorous. You think Bigfoot's funny because that's what we want you to think. Bigfoot is funny. We've bankrolled Hollywood comedies uh, uh, and uh, farcial documentaries, paid off men in gorilla suits, perpetrated hoaxes with bear prints and goat fur, bribed brainwashed cartoonists. Why would they? Bribed and brainwashed cartoonists to get especially <laughs> silly depictions of uh, children television. Even the term Bigfoot comes from us. Planted in the media in 1958, a term people would find even harder to take seriously than Sasquatch. Why? We'll get to that. The information in this article uh, that you've already read isn't entirely true. There are two direct lies and plenty of lies of omission. There is no such thing as an anomalous pseudo-disease, as referred to as SCP-1000-F1. SCP-1000 does not possess a magical death aura. In fact, SCP-1000 does not directly exhibit any anomalous effect whatsoever. We also lied about SCP-1000's intelligence level. SCP-1000 aren't chimp level smart. They're smarter. To be, surpri to be precise, they are exactly as smart as us. That's what brings us to the lies of omission. That's what this letter is all for. The lies came from me, so I figure the truth should come from me as well. This is the story. We got from the children of the sun who de uh, defected to us. It is a story we didn't believe, refused to believe at first. As you've already read, the apes we call SCP-1000 evolved alongside us. We walked in the daytime and they walked in the nighttime, our nocturnal siblings in the shadows. But while we were still wandering hunter-gatherers, they changed, like we would a few thousand years later. Tools, weapons, agriculture, domesticated animals, stable settlements, as humanity blinked in the uh, Paleo, uh, Paleocene sun, SCP-1000's population exploded across the night, blanketed the planet in the tens of billions. They had things we could still not comprehend, even though we've studied, uh, thoroughly studied the survival, surviving pieces, organic technology. They made trees and birds of prey grow into fast-moving ships. Herds of animals became trains. Bushes became flying vehicles. From insects and pigeons, they created things equivalent to cell phones, televisions, computers, and atomic bombs. The children described the vast shining cities stretching across, the, uh, across glaciers and per penetrating the deepest caverns, grown uh, skyships of ivory and uh, spider silk, creatures tending them with hundreds of blinking eyes. We were rare like gorillas now, only a few hundred thousand left at best. We avoided their settlements just like wild animals today avoid ours. SCP-1000 understood we were intelligent like them, but they, avo uh, they avoided us just as we avoided them. They saw us as fairies, as gnomes, as scribed as supernatural powers, uh, said we ate bad children while they slept in the daylight. They fenced down our dwellings, uh, our dwind dwindling populations in conservatories, outlawed poaching, but in the underground they consumed our bones as aphrodisiacs. Then we were, then their civil, bleh, then their civilization fell, and we did it. By we, I don't mean the foundation. By we, I mean humanity. The story is muddy. Supposedly, a trickster forest god showed a humanity favor, showed us the master's tools and how to use them. That's why we did it. We didn't know, perhaps, uh, they hunted us. Uh, per we didn't, what? Did I miss something? We didn't know. Perhaps they hunted us. Perhaps we were simply afraid. Perhaps it, uh, it was just that we... Uh, bleh. 
It was just that they fenced us in unintentionally or not. We simply didn't know what the truth was. S somehow, we acquired SCP-1000's own technology, and with it, we instigated an SK-class dominant shift in, in which humanity became the dominant species on Earth. We wiped out 70% of SCP-1000's population in a single day. The Day of Flowers, the children called it. Supposedly, every flower bloomed that day. While our enemies died in their sleep, we hunted the rest down. But we went further than just killing them. With only a few of the a few of the more twisted SCP-1000's devices, we drove the survivors mad, even hiding, uh, even those hiding beyond our reach. We trapped them in their own minds, blocking their higher functions and leaving their bodies to fend for themselves, like any ordinary ape. We slaughtered their living machines and burned their vast shining cities. With SCP-1000's bioweapons, uh, they reduced everything to a slurry and dust and washed or blew away spring, uh, it, and everything, bleh. <sighs> Sorry. I'm not great at reading. I don't know if you guys could tell. <laughs> but with their weapon, uh, with SCP-1000's bioweapons that reduced everything into a slurry of dust that washed or blew away in the spring rain and wind. We left no trace, not even our own memory. We turned the weapons of our, uh, of, uh, we turned their weapons onto ourselves, wiped any knowledge of SCP-1000 and the greatest civilization the planet had ever seen. Only a few humans protected themselves from the effect, kept the forbidden knowledge just in case the rest of us went back to being hunter, uh, just in case the rest of us went back to being hunter and gatherers, none the wiser. Which brings us to dead. Which brings us to today. You're going to read about this level th uh, three doc. Uh, you're going to read all about this level three documentation. Uh, but I'll give you the short version here. SCP-1000 are somehow regaining their forgotten intelligence and knowledge. Maybe they never truly lost it. We don't know. This is why the ever-increasing number of Bigfoot sightings is so worrying. Why its attempts to uh, its attempts at contact, however indis uh, indi indecipher indecipherable, that can't be right. No, that's right. Are uh, even more worrying. Yes, SCP-1000 are just like us. That's what makes them so dangerous. We wipe them out from history and memory. We dissolved their civilization, and we slaughtered uh, most of their species. Just ask yourselves: If they got the chance, what more would they do to us? Oh Jesus! Well. That's some Futurama crap right there. Yeah. Still think Bigfoot's funny? <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore. Jesus. Addendum 1000-056-D. Uh, Instances of SCP-1000 have tried to make contact with the Foundation personnel on multiple occasions. Most of these attempts have ended uh, in redacted. Uh, <laughs> Uh, through, da, 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 da. uh, it has been noted that some SCP instances of, uh, 1000 have been capable of community, um, communicating in English. Uh, the following is a rough translation of a recent SCP 1000 attempt at communication with a foundation person now on date redacted CV attached documentation. We forgive you. We given choice for now. Not forever. Let us back in. Yikes. Uh... Yikes. So like funny monkey man? Listen, I was <laughs> always an it's, avid it's, supporter it's of the Bigfoot. Uh, even though I've never seen it. I, I, I have always been an avid supporter of Bigfoot. Um... <laughs> Is truly sad what happened to them, and hopefully, when the monkey overlords come back, I they will choose to spare me. 
Have they been making the monkey memes? The monkey memes. <laughs> <laughs> they've they've clearly infiltrated our minds. They want to come back. Turn up. Are you game. going to let them? It's all fun and games until. It's all fun and games until like all of these Bigfoot end up like Gorilla Grodd, where they're able to just psychically do everything. Bro, they fucking turn squirrels into telephones. Like they're crazy, bro. Uh, this is one of the more consistent bits of lore that is in like the SCP like overbranching universe. Uh, SCP one thousand and like their previous civilization pops up a variety of other times in other SCP articles. Uh, for example, a few old gods. Um, um, I think one of them that I'll talk about next week. Uh, I think it's SCP-4715, which is basically... Uh, I, I won't spoil it for now, but it's basically a very old god of war. And there were illustrations of it in an old like SCP-1000 bunker, where it seemed like they were studying it. The bunker made out of moose carcasses or something? It was covered in vines. Like, it was very, very old. I think it was made out of stone. But I'll okay. brush up on that when we do that, maybe next week. But what'd you guys think of Bigfoot? Yeah. Uh, Bigfoot is, like, half of the crap in Futurama, and I don't like that. <laughs> An entire civilization that was wiped out and we wiped our memories. I like the whole prospect of biotechnology. I think that's kind of cool. Yeah. I think that's against the Geneva Conventions. <laughs> no, that's bioweapons. Yeah, I know. I still think that's against the Geneva Conventions. <laughs> you, said, you heard the guys. They made animals into nukes. I'm pretty sure that counts. Everyone as a gangster weapon. until the cow blows up. Oh god. <laughs> Everyone gangster until Bigfoot makes a legit dragon. Yeah. Yeah, it would probably be worse. You think that they made a cast uh they made a Castle Bravo incident just by feeding a cow way too much? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. I, I think that uh, Maybe it was well. I doubt it will happen, but I, I think the SCP organization should work with them. The Bigfoot? Oh, yeah, that's never. Well, happened. yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, like, come on. You don't think Dr. Bright's going to be like, eh, this seems fun. <laughs> yeah, Dr. Bright is the other doctors you got to worry about because Dr. Kaldraki will be like, Bro, Kaldraki is like, hmm, how can I weaponize this? Right, right. It'll, it'll just be like you can make nukes out of whales. You say, <laughs> explain how. Could you, could you perhaps make a weapon out of the immortal lizard? Everybody's like, no. Kentrocky's like, we need to kill all of them. We're like, yeah, we got whale nukes, and he's like, I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. It's like maybe they no, they so turn whales into they turn whales into submarines. Why should we get rid of them? <laughs> yeah. If you guys want to learn are... anything more about the doctors, we did th four episodes, actually. Or was it five? I think it was four. We did four episodes talking four. about the uh, the doctors. Two on Kondraki, I think one on Bright and one on Clef, if you guys want to check those out. Uh, and I, this seems like a good opportunity right in the middle of the video to uh, recommend uh, if you guys want to see more content like this, you guys should subscribe and drop a like and uh, let me know if you like this content in the comments below. Anyway, uh, Bigfoot. Yeah. <laughs> Always be plugging. And shameless self-promotion. So I think this is a really interesting take on Bigfoot. Like, I haven't seen a lot of, like, unique takes like this on, like, something so elusive. Like... Because the first part makes sense. You're like, oh, yeah, Bigfoot stays away from people. Like, it makes sense that they would have a disease, like, th that they would want to stay away from people. Yeah. And, and then it's like, oh, shit, like, there's more to the story. I, I think this is a very well-written yes. written, uh, entry. You true threat. <laughs> huh. Man, that, that ending reminds me of the freaking, I forget which SCP it was, but it's like an entire planet. And it's just an entire planet of hive mind individual uh, individuals, and then we all, and then like all the scientists thought, 
oh yeah, they totally don't know that we don't know that they're a hive mind and they're totally waiting for us to exterminate until freaking go until a freaking person just traps some lady in the elevator. It goes like, listen, we know everything, right? Submit or we will make you submit. It's like, no, no, no. <laughs> oh, God. But like, is the Yeti and, and like... They were, and they were just... <laughs> oh. Yep, turn up. Oh, continue, turn up. Is there an SCP about the Yeti? There might be another one. But from what 1000 tells us, it, it, it kind of seems like they're the same. I see. But I wouldn't be surprised because there's plenty of contradictory evidence in, in like, the SCP lore. Like, it's like, for example, like, very little is known about this SCP because they spend most of their time hiding from people. So something that could, like, us, like, a researcher, like, heard about a sighting, they're like, oh, that's an instance of SCP-1000. And then someone actually goes and they're like, uh-uh, oh, this is a whole different SCP. It's kind of like research back in the 50s, how people are like, oh, this mold cures people. And then later you find out more shit about it. It's like, oh, this is penicillin. Not all mold like helps people. Who knew that World War Three wouldn't be started by wouldn't be against uh, wouldn't be the United States against like, I don't know, North Korea. And then instead, it would be Joe Biden versus Bigfoot Obama. I'd pay to watch that. <laughs> I'd fight in that war. It sounds like a watch. funny bit. <laughs> like just having like a freaking um having a, a Nietzsche exposition, like existentialist moment between like a human and a Bigfoot is like, why are we doing this? <laughs> we put just our brothers to against suffer. each other, but we're the same. <laughs> <laughs> we put our brothers against each other just 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 to suffer them, but we're the same. It's kind of you fucked up hair. that they just kept, like, I fucking don't. people in, like, conservatories. Like, they said, like, we are the exact intelligence level as them. So they were just keeping dudes. Like, th like we weren't, like, pre-apes. Like, we had the same intelligence level. Like, you think we'd be taking, like, you think zoos would be keeping, like, gorillas? And they're like, hey, uh, bro, um, when's lunchtime? Nothing that shit wouldn't be happening. <laughs> Yeah, just like Planet of the uh, Rise of the Planet of the Apes. It's just Except, like you know, Caesar wasn't the opposite. Activity. <laughs> I mean, it's like yeah, the... Caesar. I mean, Caesar wasn't kept in captivity, though. That's the thing. Mm. Well, like, if, if apes were talking, like, we wouldn't be like, it's like, hey, can I get out of here? We're, like, people would freak out at first, but like, like, it, like, imagine if apes were, like, always talking. Like, I know, like, when the Europeans went down to Africa, like, they did a fuck ton of really fucked up shit. But they didn't start zoos with black people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it's fucked up to keep something yeah. else that has the same intelligence, you know, in a zoo. Yeah, definitely. And that's pretty much what they did. Yeah, I, I understand. So in my mind, they're still, like, in the wrong but they've probably seen, like, their errors. Yeah. But then again, they were also like, fucking turning tree, like, animals into bombs, so, like, I think they're a little bit worse. Say what you want about humanity. Like, you just learned that they started prejudicing <laughs> other big feet from... <laughs> Say what you will about the white the man, dark. but Bigfoot's worse. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, they start prejudicing big feet by the color of their freaking oh, fur. No. Oh no! Oh no! The thickness of their fur is like your fur is a point point oh seven. My fur is a solid two point five. Get the heck bro, out! Bro, I of got here. blonde fur and blue eyes, bro. Like, <laughs> oh god, oh, no! God. <laughs> All right, let's move. I on. got a solution. Watch a out. final one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're gonna move on before this gets worse. Anyway, the next Ginger SCP we're doing no is uh, the Garfield one. Oh, oh God! You know, the really fucking terrible one. <laughs> we went from. Can we go back to fur racism? What? No. <laughs> honest, honest to God, I'd rather talk about that than the Garfield. Uh, listen, I'm oh. a big fan of our. I'm a big fan of r slash I'm sorry, John, but even 
But even that, with that being said, I don't like this SCP. You shouldn't. It'd be weird if you did. <laughs> like, it's actually stupid. This SCP is very disturbing. And I'm probably going to turn off the slideshow I have about it in a little bit and just pick one image. Because goddamn, RVs really goddamn horrible. I think it cycled through all of them. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, I think you should just stay on one. Table. This is the image we're using. It's creepy, but it's not as bad as the rest. <laughs> he just has a ketchup stain. It's okay. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's just, uh, just, just ketchups. Anywho. Yep. Um, so the SCP organization secretly supports Garfield Media franchise via SCP front companies. Uh, uh, th 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 uh, they support it with fr uh, front companies in the comic and film industries. So they do not want the Garfield uh, brand to die like anytime soon. And they go through extreme lengths to keep it alive because they fear what might happen if it like if it starts going really downhill. So this uh, SCP is a seven. Euclid SCP. It's not contained, but they do have some measures to control it, kind of. It does have a set attack pattern, and it is possible to divert a, an attack, which is why it's Euclid and not Keter. I see. Like so they. they <laughs> so what you're Sorry. saying? So wait, they continue to support like the, uh, the SCP organization continues to like, support the. Uh, Garfield, Garfield media comics. franchise. Yep. Yeah, or, or else. This or happens. else, just or else. Or or else. Okay. Which is really fucking this funny. S this SCP is actually legitimately goddamn terrifying, and I don't know who was the mad guy, mad lad who brought it, but whoever who whoever made this, screw you. I hate how detailed you know? it is. Like how detailed its entry is. Like it, it's terrible. It, like nothing is good about this. Yes, to the creator, uh, I mean, <laughs> it's probably extremely disturbing. So, you know what? He's a good author. He's a good horror gore author, I'll say that. Jesus Christ. Yeah, they literally put, they uh, have the uh, producers of the comic strip, like in the newspapers. They put mimetic agents are, uh, in the comics to hold a user retention. So I'm not 100% sure what mimetic agents are, but I'm pretty sure they literally put shit that affects the reader's minds so they, like, enjoy the Garfield, like, comic strips more. <laughs> like, they go oh, through extreme they, lengths. That, it's that bad. They don't want this thing coming out. <laughs> so, this thing has a, a set attack pattern. Basically, it only comes back... Uh, let me see if I can find my note on it. Uh, he will manifest when the comic is doing poorly in a uh, public perception and attack people who criticize the comics, rival uh, comic producers and makers and artists of uh, comics producers when it's directly their fault for Garfield doing poorly, uh, parody makers, and the creator Jim Davis. Oh God, what are they going to say about Jim? <laughs> It gets real bad for Jim. J Jim oh. does not come out of the story, like, happy. Poor oh. Jim. Poor Jim. Imagine creating something that, that turns it's into, like, an... Imagine creating something that turns into an SCP. <laughs> Imagine, Jeez. like, just yeah, wanting to make a fun little cat comic, and then you, 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 just, you just... I don't think he actually knows this exists. Like, they, like... Uh, uh, Oh, well. Because, like, the SCP probably... got, like, mind-wiping shit. Right. Amnestics, right. that's what it's called. Well, then he's probably uh, thinking, you know, like, he's getting a lot of money. That's good, right? It's still yeah. not good for him. Like, it, oh, it's, it's, still... it's not good. Like, oh. it, it has not occasionally tried to attack him. And uh, the SCP organization managed to lure it off. But, like, imagine, like, if there was something, like, you just know that there's something hunting you. That looks like yeah, that. That's... That's terrible. So, SCP-3166, which is the one we're talking about, is two meters tall, it's humanoid, covered in real cat fur, 
The insides of it, however, are 100% lasagna, and the meat in the pasta is uh, genetically identical to the creator Jim Davis. Oh, God. J Jim occasionally complains about severe mosquito day, uh, bites the day before a manifestation of SCP-3166. Oh, oh no. And we're just getting started. <laughs> oh, God. There is a story that goes along with it, but instead I'm just going to link the Volgans video and uh, shout out, you know, some of the smaller YouTubers, like shout out to Volgan, who has like, you know, I think he's like has like a hundred hundred thousand subscribers, you know, the little guys. And also shout out uh, to my my friend. Uh, he, he's really low right now, but he doesn't have nearly as much subscribers as he deserves. He needs like at least a few more. Uh, shout out to PewDiePie. Okay. <laughs> that, oh, Jesus. Wait, what? what? I mean, not turn up. <laughs> yeah, shut up, turn up. Andrew, Come up. on. Jokes aren't funny. You your Canadian ways. Oh. The first time it manifested was uh, in 1989, in October 21st, uh, in the offices of Chicago Media, which current at the time were uh, responsible for uh, Garfield Comics. I see. Ease. Um. Things were, uh, it basically just showed up in the office, started wandering around confused, and then, like, when security personnel tried to, like, stop it, it assaulted them. I don't think it killed them, and then it popped up in several other uh, offices related to Garfield Media, and that was the first time it manifested. And then its attacks became more direct uh, later in the years. But why did it attack the the people there? Uh, I'm assuming probably it was the first time Garfield's sales started dipping. Mm. Okay, well, yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um. So, to basically, the way the SCP organization like tries to neutralize attacks is, one, they try to support Garfield Comics as much as possible. That's the first line of defense. The second line of defense is they have a few teams of people who constantly monitor... Uh, people who criticize uh, rival producers and people who are of target because only when Garfield's sales and popularity start dipping is when they need to be concerned and they start monitoring these people. Um, I see. Yeah. So they basically watch them and they basically have a van that is filled with like frozen lasagna <laughs> and a couple of guys who are really scary with big guns. I see. So... When this thing manifests, uh, it is it, it looks like a fucking abomination. It will um, start just making its way towards its target. It always manifests like within like a few blocks of its target and starts just making its way towards the target or waits for the target where it is. Uh, and then what the SCP organization does is like they just drive the van and they throw out the frozen lasagna until they can get it into an alley or something and neutralize it. But it will be back. Like they've like it's possible to kill it. It's very difficult, but it, it's possible. Um, like it takes a lot of bullets. Like it's made out of lasagna. Like it's pretty fucking dead. Like you gotta pretty much just tear it in half with bullets. Uh, it has like almost like superhuman strength. Um, it's not. It doesn't have great offense. Like it'll use whatever's around it to try to bludgeon like its target. But uh, it'll, it, like Garfield, it has a constant lust after fucking lasagna. So they just make a trail of lasagna into like an alley or something and they just neutralize it there. Uh, now, I guess we'll, uh, we'll get to my, my least favorite part of this SCP, which is the way it attacks its victims. Uh-oh. So how do you think well, the, this that, SCP that attacks its uh, victims uh, turn up? Uh, well, if we're going off of the image, I'm assuming it just bites their head off. <laughs> well, actually, that might be too <laughs> lenient. <laughs> that might be too lenient yeah, for this you, SCP. You might yeah. want to, you might want to go outside the thinking cap like this one turn up. But I assure oh, you, Keyshawn, do you know? All right, no, no, wait. So he, 
I somewhat know. I think I know what you're going to say because I've seen a video on this SCP. All right. Uh, uh, but. Th- all right. <laughs> Clearly, it, it, okay, it eats people, right? Mm-hmm. So, and then what happens is it, it gets turned into lasagna in its digestive system. Pretty close, but it's worse. Oh, no. So, remember how I said that its insides are completely made out of lasagna. Yeah. So first, this two like over two meter tall fucking like mouth formed kind of Garfield looking horror creature uh, will find you. Then, if you try to run away, it will chase after you incredibly fast. It will pick up whatever blunt object it will find, and it will subdue you with blunt force trauma. Its facial expressions does not change. Once you're on the ground, it will get on top of you and place its mouth against yours, and it will start injecting, like, filling your mouth with lasagna until you die because you overflow with lasagna <laughs> oh God. it will slowly fill your entire stomach with lasagna as it starts getting bigger and bigger until shit starts rupturing wait so does it actually when it bites does it like pierce the skin i'm assuming like, uh I, I think it just bites it onto doesn't... your mouth oh so yeah, so it, it doesn't so... bite <laughs> so is the red actually lasagna Yes. <laughs> yeah, oh, wow. Okay. It is actually lasagna. And wow. the meat of the lasagna, it has DNA that uh, has uh, origins of the creator. Right. So basically, you're eating, uh, eating human meat at that point. You're eating Jim Davis uh, himself, the creator of Garfield. Ugh. Yeah, there are some yeah, it, goddamn it's horror stories. Death. Like, I, I'll link the Volgans video. He tells a story at the end of his, uh, at w- once he goes over the documents for SCP-3166, and he tells a story. I, what was it called? Uh, I think it's called, like, A Rainy Day in London or some shit. Uh, it, it's a pretty good story. It gives you, like, an exact feel for what it is. That will also be linked down in the description, as well as all the uh, wiki, SCP wiki uh, links for all the SCPs. Yeah, what would you guys think? What would you guys think of Garfield? How do you kill I this always thing? Hated this I mean, thing. aside from bullets, you have to, you have to riddle it. There, there is no other. You have to cut it in half. You, what if you give it, it back? If you're one on one with Garfield, you will lose. What if you give it bad diarrhea? I don't. It's it doesn't okay. eat you. <laughs> That's the problem. It doesn't eat you. It doesn't eat you. It feeds you until you pop. Oh. It basically pulls a Majin Buu. And for those of you who watch Dragon Ball, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Where Majin Buu just decided in his super food form that he was just going to turn into liquid and just go through this reporter's mouth and he expanded until he blew up. Terrifying death. Absolute oh. terrifying death. Yeah, that's about it. So you guys like a uh, uh, Gorefield? No. no. <laughs> well, that's the right I mean, answer. I mean, like the freaking um, uh, is some is some channel I forgot what it was, but his Gorefield stuff is pretty. I hope this doesn't yes, turn no. off. I, I I hope this doesn't turn away people who like Garfield. Uh, I don't know. I feel like people uh, mainly like Garfield off its memes, or if they're like a hundred and eighty years old. That's probably true. <laughs> Sorry to any hundred. Sorry, years. Boomer Garfield fans. <laughs> Let us know in the comments if you're a Garfield fan or if you left before this. God. <laughs> Let us know before if you left before um ah guy who did Ghostbusters I forgot his uh Bill Murray see him Gar- yeah he- let yeah. us know if you yeah he did Garfield he did both Garfields <laughs> uh let us know if you left before Bill Murray 
said in Zombieland, quote, if you have any regrets, what would it be? Bill Murray says, eh, maybe Garfield. <laughs> That's fair. So, yeah. Let us know if you left before he became Garfield. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I think we are just about done. Do you guys want to say anything else? Hmm. I can officially say that this is not the thing that I expected to to, to be talking about today. I think I picked if, out a, a few good ones. If all three of them went at each other, what would happen? <laughs> Who if would all win? three of them um, went after each probably other. win. Uh, I, I think the Plague Doctor would win. Yeah. I don't know. Luckily, I don't think Bigfoot or the Plague Doctor is responsible for Garfield's, you know, dwindling popularity. So I, I think they'd be pretty fine. <laughs> oh, so they would just not really care about each other? Well, it's why I ha didn't have him pop up in the campaign, because it would make, like, no sense. What if... <laughs> Do you think that Bigfoot could, like, turn Garfield into a weapon of mass destruction? I oh, Even though God. he already is. I, I think it's, like, technology. So it's, like... Like, like, you know how you have to, like, make a computer and know what you're doing? I don't think they can just touch something and say, like, oh, cow bomb, or, like, oh, this is now a, a phone or something. I think, like, it has to be something that someone who knows what they're doing, who has the right components, can actually do it. By the way, I just put an image in the chat of what Majin Buu does. Yeah, I, I hate that. <laughs> it's, not a, it's not a fun sight. <laughs> anyway i think we're good so uh thank you guys for watching um yeah we'll see you in the next episode we'll try to keep these out a little bit more regularly uh, i know there's like a three week gap in between this one and the last one but uh next week we'll, we'll do another one if you guys want to yeah yeah i love the enthusiasm everyone here is great okay <laughs> we'll see y'all in the next one Bye bye